Hello everyone, welcome to another Roguelike of the Week. I know it's been a while since I lasted a Roguelike of the Week, thereby entirely defeating the intended weekly nature of it, but, you know, that's the nature of real life. But I'll try and get back to doing one most weeks if possible. I have in the past promised you a look at some Roguelikes which are actually sort of fancier paid for games, and this one is Lost Labyrinth. There is a free version available, which is sort of um, a demo version almost. It's sort of a, a limited version of the game. This is the extended version, which is the one you pay for. It's not expensive. I'll put a link and such below as usual. Um, but this is Lost Labyrinth, which says it's inspired by the Legend of Zelda series and describes itself as a coffee break roguelike, which should mean it's not very long. I've never got to the end, and I don't know how long it is. Um, so I don't know how close I've got to finishing it, but I've never got there. Anyway, let's start, shall we? And straight away we'll see one of the interesting features of this game. Incidentally, listen to that music. I mean, I always get this stuck in my head for a couple of hours after I've been playing the game. But anyway, um, so here's one of the things about the game. Multiplayer. That's right. It um, supports local multiplayer. It's kind of a hot seat thing, so one character will take their turn, which can consist of several actions, as you'll see, and then the next player will take over the keyboard for their turn. Um, permadeath, as you'll see. So, we'll just jump into the one-player version here. Um, it will immediately allocate to you a set of skills and talents, but I always reset it so I can choose my own. Use this skull and crossbones thing here to reset them all. And as you can see, they're divided into sort of melee-centric skills, uh, projectile or ranged skills, and then there's magic. I'm terrible with magic in this game, so we're not going to bother with that. We'll go melee-focused. But there are various kinds of uh, magic skills available, lots of different types of magic. And this way of shadows is all sort of stealth and covert stuff, thievery and assassination. Way of Adventure is kind of generally applicable stuff. So we have a bit of um, melee-ish thing. We have a bit of a melee-ish influence in terms of armor mastery here. But you also have generally applicable stuff like luck, which is a bit nebulous, lightning resistance, survival, um, which gives you more food. It's very, very easy to run out of food in this game. And then you've got stuff like Way of the Gods, uh, which is... Sort of following different gods which give you various passive bonuses and that kind of thing. Uh, I actually usually don't bother with Way of the Gods. And then you get these sort of perks over here which give you, um, for instance, Monkey Grip, use two-handed weapons with one hand. Fast Learner, you learn new lore twice as fast, etc. So you get various sort of miscellaneous bonuses. And similar to something like Cataclysm, if you've ever played that, um, you can also take Flaws weaknesses in your character. You can be disfigured, illiterate, capable of no magic at all, unlucky, unobservant, various things, which give you more points to spend on the positives. So we have 14 points by default, but if, for instance, we take unobservant, we'll get an extra two points for 16. Um, so I probably won't bother with that. Although, actually, let's take short magic the duration of your spells is halved, because I'm planning to go with a melee character anyway. Uh, and low mana as well, so that gives us an extra 4 points. So we now have 18 to spend on things that we actually want. I always go with pick locks, because you will find a lot of doors in this game, and most of them, if not all of them, are locked. And there are very, very few keys, so pick locks is useful. It lets you just open locked doors. Um, let's take Weapon Focus Long Blades, which means we start with a sword. We'll also take Armor Mastery, because that lets us start with Plate Mail. Um, hmm, what else? I'm not going to bother with crafting. I've never come across a situation yet where I need to repair anything. Um, I'll take Luck. It is a bit nebulous, but it can't be a harmful thing. Um... Let's also go with parry for a bit of defense. Um, strength, so we do a bit more damage. And what else? A couple more things. Let's take 
Mm, survival experts, so we get more food, and the food we do consume will be more beneficial. Uh, I'll take God of Wealth, so we'll actually get a chance of gaining some maximum life when we pick up stacks of money. And... Mm, mm, what else? Let's say Herb Law, so that herbs will be identified when we pick them up. Oh, we still have one point left. Um, diplomacy, maybe. No, let's go with Fast Learner. No, let's go with Haggle. Yes, better shop prices. That could be useful. And we'll get started. And we get to choose one of these um, avatars here. It doesn't make any difference, really, so we'll just pick one. I don't like this screen, by the way. I mean no insult to the developer with this, but this particular screen is incredibly amateurish. I mean, just look at it. It looks like it was thrown together in Microsoft Paint, and he misspelt Prologue as well. Better to just do without it. So let's skip past that. Now you'll notice here we are um, in a little circle. The circle is so tiny because the dungeon is dark, and uh, so we need to light a torch. Now you can use mouse control. You'll notice there are all these buttons down in the bottom right, which you can click on. Um, or you can do it with keyboard control. I like to play the actual main game part with the keyboard, but as you probably noticed, I was using the mouse to go around the sort of character creation suite. That's the way I tend to play it. Now this is kind of a roguelike, more or less, so we're dealing with a procedurally generated dungeon crawl, but it does have some elements that remind me a bit of more puzzly games. And uh, we'll probably see that as we go along, so let's pop the inventory open. We need to light a torch. You'll see we've got a few things here. Um, and as we move around, I'm using the arrows to move around the menu <clears throat> here. Um, and you'll see each item, when we move onto it in the top right, lists a selection of options in the bottom left. So if we go on the fishing rod, we've got fish here, throw, drop, split stack, etc. Same with the torch. You can light it, drop it, and so on. So we'll light the torch. And this only has four directional movement, so I'm moving around using the arrow keys here. A lot of stuff we will see on the in the dungeon will be on the floor. So this sort of pentagram thing here restores our magic points. We haven't spent any at the moment because we're a melee character and we haven't really done anything anyway. But if we had, we could restore our magic points at this space by pressing the spacebar to activate it. Uh, I think you can use those three times per floor. And there's a similar thing for restoring health, which is kind of an ankh-shaped thing. You might notice that we have a, a number in a green square appearing alongside us. That is basically the number of actions we can take in this turn. It's not one turn per action. In this case, you'll see six actions remaining in this turn. And as we move, it goes five, four, and so on. And once we've run out of those, that's the end of our turn, and that's when other things will happen. Um, <clears throat> and we will move on to the next turn. And if we were playing multiplayer, then getting down to zero would be the point where the next player then gets to take their turn with several actions, and they would take over the keyboard from you. But we're not doing that. Uh, <clears throat> so, let's open this door, because we do have the pick locks ability. And you'll notice that these enemies seem to be just standing here. And this is why I say um, the game actually kind of reminds me of a puzzle game in some ways. There are enemies which will charge towards you on sight, but for the most part, enemies won't move. Sometimes they'll shoot at you as well. Um, oh, this sort of weird blue dog thing to the north of us at the moment is a, a one that will charge at you, I think. But most enemies will just stand on the spot and you walk up to them and tackle them. So it gives the game a bit of a puzzly feeling, I think. There's the Ankh, which will restore our health. It also has a mushroom on it. And right here, there's some water on the floor, so we'll deal with this creature first. Um, and like a lot of roguelikes, you have to keep yourself sort of uh, fed, and in this case, also hydrated. It's very easy to get to a point where you're starving to death or dying of thirst, so it's best to slurp water off the floor whenever you find it. At least that's what I do. Um, oh, don't want to go into that web. We could get stuck and waste several turns. Some actions will end your turn immediately, incidentally. So attacking an enemy, however many actions you have remaining in your turn, attacking an enemy will immediately end the turn. 
So there's a monster there, but there's also a pile of herbs, so we'll pick those up. Picking up items also ends your turn. Unless you have uh, one of the skills which prevents that. So here's the exit from the floor. We'll head down to the next floor. And this is where we get to upgrade our skills. You don't have a standard sort of leveling system here. Um, you get to upgrade your stats between floors. So I'm going to go with... Let's see. I'm going to go with strength. We can't do much about this ice block here. So I'll just pick up this scroll. Might actually try out one of these random scrolls we've picked up and just see what it does. Often a bad idea in a roguelike, but what the hell, let's live dangerously. So we'll read this. Hmm. Not sure what that did. Oh, it made us invulnerable for three turns. If you look on the right, we have invulnerability status. And it's worn off. Now let's see what the other scroll does. Polar light. Hmm, not sure. I guess maybe it gives us illumination in addition to our torches. Oh yes, there are also various traps scattered around. Now this is basically how the game goes. Of course there's um, a lot more we could be doing. Oh, I think this is a trader. Yeah. She'll sell us a key, opens any chest or door. But we have the pick locks ability, so that's not too big a deal. Pickaxe removes boulders. That actually might be worth having, but we don't have enough gold. Maybe I should sell some mushrooms. I'm selling them with the spacebar here. Wow, that actually didn't give us any money, so that was kind of pointless. Oh well, clear out some inventory space anyway. Um, maybe I'll sell this dagger. Yeah, there we go. So that gave us 30 gold. And let's buy the pickaxe. And now hopefully we might actually be able to chip through some of the boulders that block the path. You do see quite a lot of those around. Um, yeah, so this is basically how Lost Labyrinth plays. There is more to it, of course. Um, playing a spellcasting class gives you various um, magical options. You can use different kinds of spells from different schools of magic, but I tend to get very killed very quickly when I try to play as a magic user in this game. So I prefer to go melee. Um, and as you descend from floor to floor, after a few levels, well, heal ourselves at this ankh. We hadn't taken much damage, but what the hell. And we'll slurp this straight off the floor. And um, after a few levels, you do start coming across sort of um, novel types of room. They're usually marked by kind of a line of question marks. It's a little hard to describe. There'll be sort of a, a barrier of question mark spaces. Um, how do we do this? We have to use the pickaxe, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's nothing behind it anyway. Um, but these, this sort of line of question mark spaces will typically indicate that there's a special kind of room on the other side. It might be an orc village full of orcs doing their orky business. Or it might be um, a trader or a trainer or various other sort of special rooms. So if we manage to not get killed here, we might actually see one of those during the course of the video. Um, but I don't know if you're getting what I mean um, from watching me play it, about it being sort of puzzly. Like, none of this stuff is moving. And once you start getting into areas where there are teleport tiles lying around, you start to have to manoeuvre a bit more. Think about um, where you're going... Oh, we could actually do with that gold key to open this chest. Maybe we can go back and get it. Um... Uh, but that, that does mean remembering where the trader was, of course. Um, so, oh, huh, that's new. <clears throat> yeah, as sort of teleport tiles and that kind of thing become more common, um, that was an ambush. Enemy popped out of the ground. Uh, as those become more common, you start to have to deal with questions of sort of how you want to approach enemy positions in the level you're on. Uh, we're getting hungry and thirsty, so probably better both eat and drink. So I'll drink some of this water that we have here, and I will also eat this chicken. There we go. So, uh, let's see if we can open this chest that we encountered. Let's use the key. Where's the key? There it is. And our torch has gone out as well, interestingly enough. 
We found a short sword. Hmm. Probably not as good as our current sword. We better relight our torch anyway. Um, so this is basically how Lost Labyrinth plays. And um, I do like it. I wouldn't be doing this as a roguelike of the week if I didn't like it. But it's not an unreserved recommendation. It's a slightly odd playing experience. This whole sort of um, number of actions in a turn thing makes it feel quite stilted as you play along. And that might not be apparent from the way I've been playing it here. But when you're... Ah, row of question marks. Um, but when you're playing either with other people, or um, you use a spell that lets you summon, say, a skeleton or some other minion like that, it becomes quite awkward taking several actions and then someone else's turn, because it just skips to wherever they are in the level. And it can feel quite awkward. Um, it's also a little more random than I typically like. A lot of the time you can't tell if you're about to walk into a trap or... Um, or something like that. So there's a little bit more randomness to it than I usually favour. But still, it's worth a go. Um, and you don't have to commit to buying it, because there is, of course, the free version out there as well. But I do recommend taking a look at Lost Labyrinth, um, if this seems like something you'd be interested in. It is a roguelike. It is a procedurally generated... Oh, crap. A procedurally generated dungeon crawl. But it does have this slightly more sort of methodical um oh hell I need to heal myself oh almost dead um do i have anything to heal with healing potion yes i'll drink that okay yeah it does have this very methodical but also slightly stilted pace to it which takes a bit of getting used to uh, but it is worth checking out so this has been lost labyrinth um, as I mentioned, I will link to the website below where you can get both the free version and the paid version if you're so inclined. It's just been updated recently, so it is still being worked on, though I'm not sure um, what the pace of development is, but it is still receiving updates. So I'll link below, um, and thanks for watching. As always, rejoin me next time. We'll do more game stuff and more roguelikes of the week um, on an approximately weekly basis, hopefully, if I can manage to pull that off. So anyway, until the next time, thanks for watching, and bye for now.